welcome back to another episode of The Veiled Cottage Witch. I am interviewing someone again today. Would you like to introduce yourself and Hi. tell us about um, tell us about the craft that you practice? Tell us about uh, what you represent. Uh, my name's Evelyn, and I consider myself to be a witch, but primarily my focus is on Norse paganism. I have been studying that. I uh, am very drawn to that because my father's side of the family was Scandinavian, Norwegian, and I've done some ancestry, and actually I've traced some relatives back to Oslo, Norway, so I feel very drawn, and I want to know as much about this craft as I can, so I'm doing a deep dive on that. Awesome, awesome. Um, I know that me being a uh, a Celtic pagan, I I know that we often have like crossovers yes. between the Norse oh, yes. and Celtic. So I find it so fascinating, and I um, I really love that we're starting to unify instead of differentiate. I think yes. that's great. Yes, there's so many overlaps. Yeah, because there really the, are. The population ended up living in the same areas together as. They right. Migrated, so so that's... yeah, it's all a melting pot over there, really is. Yes. Uh, just like you know, we are over here in the states. So um, I love that. I love expanding out and reaching out and discovering. It's just, it's wonderful. I love that you're nerdy like that. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> we find each other. Yes. See? Yes. Yes. And and we we found commonality with. Your Celtic Owen rooms and yes. the Nordic rooms, there are yes. some commonalities there, which I find fascinating. Yes, and I think we'll probably do a little uh, discussion on that yes. at a later date. But I wanted to tell you, this is not just somebody I pulled off the street. This is actually my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, speaking of, I know I'm going to jump forward in our questions um, but do you want to talk about how we met okay yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a great story it's uh, over three years ago almost four I think it's getting now I stick on you like herpes right yeah I have, <laughs> <laughs> I had I, I'm a snowbird so part of a in the summertime, in the warmer months, I live in Maryland, and in the colder months, I'm in Arizona. Originally, it was just two and a half months. Now it's almost eight months. Yay! I stole her. <laughs> she stole me out here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, back in, uh, I guess it was 2019, I had finally decided to bite the bullet and get over this little fear I had of deep diving into tarot and I wanted to take a tarot class when I came out to Arizona and I happened to see Joey's name on the I guess it was the witch's workshop okay or something like that uh, and so I thought I just felt that's the one and I I need to contact her to take this class I just intuitively felt that was the right one so, because there were several other ones advertised, and then uh, you, I messaged you. I hadn't even gone to Arizona yet. Yeah, you hadn't met. You were just you total stranger met. calling me on the phone, and I'm like, "Yeah, hello." <laughs> <laughs> so then we we I signed up for her class, but I missed the first one, so we had to schedule a one on one time with the very first one. And we just clicked from then. And, I mean, it was... That's how people just... fall in love with me. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just like, when we get alone, like I tell my people I read for, I'm like, we're going to go and get ahead and get the money situation out of the way first because you're going to fall in love with me and then it's awkward. <laughs> so... Well, I still think that we knew each other in a past life somewhere. For sure. For sure. For sure. We had some, lots of connections, you know, um, too uncanny to dismiss. Yes. Um, so, and I'm so glad you ended up, you know, coming to the right tarot class. 
<laughs> um, you had a choice, and I'm glad you chose, yes, yes. Joey. <laughs> I am too. But you, what you started? Oh I my started gosh. it. I yes. started it. So tell me, uh, um, you know, what your favorite uh, tarot decks? Oh are. my gosh! You know, you're asking me now I after know. I counted before I came here how many decks I have. And um, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you don't have to say how many. There's. You don't have to say well, how many. But you, yeah, I, I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Between Oracle and Tarot, mm -hmm. I have over a hundred decks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, uh, there was a few duplicates back in Maryland, but and I. I find uses for most of them, but to answer that question, as far as my favorite, it depends on what I'm using it for. Okay. If I'm using it to read for myself, I love the Crow Tarot. Yes, um, and of I course the Rider Waite is, you know, if I don't want to think too hard. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I haven't had coffee, I'll... It's a lazy reader. The lazy, I'll use book. the Rider Waite. <laughs> lazy reader's deck. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I love the yeah. uh, Guardian of the Night. Um, yes, I love the Druid Craft. Uh, mm. I love uh, the Uncommon Tarot. Um, yes. I love. Um, oh my God, there's so many. Um, my brain is it's just uh, the too many, too list. many runic tarot, the Illuminati tarot that I got last oh, that year. That is, that is, you know, I. I looked through it, and I think it's a little overstimulating for me. Have, have the you had that tarot. Yeah, have you had that experience with um, any decks that are just too yes? Much? There, the one that, uh, and I never did actually buy it. I think it was called Prism Tarot or something Prism, like that. With Prisma Visions, Visions because yes. when I looked at it, it made me dizzy. Right. <laughs> It's yeah. that certain kind of yes. artwork, like, kind of like Starry Night. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. it's very popular, but when I go to look at it, it makes me get gotcha. dizzy. It's a little too busy. <laughs> so yes. I avoid that. Yes. Um, well, what about Oracle decks? I love the Urban Crow. The Urban the Crow. The War yes. deck, which are MJ. I'm a big MJ Colony fan. If you're listening, um, MJ, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> I will tag her in the description box. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um... And uh, yeah, she has several other decks too. Um, and most recently, I like the Stacy DeMarco Deep, Dark, and Dangerous. Yes. And the um, one, the uh, Seasons of the Witch Yule. Oh Oracle yeah. Deck, yeah, those which are interesting. Which I just recently got, and it's by uh, Lorraine Anderson and Julia Diaz. Julia Diaz yes. I love that work deck. Um, I I was instantly attracted to it when I bought it, but then when I opened it, it's like, oh my God, I just love this. So, and also one of my very first Oracle decks is one of my favorites, is the Oracle of the Mermaids. Uh, oh, by, that is I think gorgeous. It's, her last name is Cavendish, Lucy, Lucy Cavendish. Cavendish. Yes. And I use that a lot when I'm in Maryland because I'm near the shore and it's... Oh, um, nice. It's... It was about mermaids in the ocean. And, yeah, you know, obviously. I just feel the connectivity to the water. Do you I, go to the ocean and like spread out? I don't go to the ocean per se, but we have a lake near where I live and I and I do it there. Nice. It's like right across from where we live, a few hundred feet. So I spend a lot of time in the that. water there. Um, yes. where, where oceans meet... Uh, the shore is is a liminal space. Yes. No matter if it's ocean, lake, stream, you know, waterfall, it's all a, a liminal space, and that's like the best uh, places uh, to you know really tap into the unknown kind of yeah. a little bit. Well, I like I having remember. best of both worlds. I yes. love getting my feet in the ocean water, mm. and I love the lake near where we are, which I'm not sure if it's actually truly fresh water. It, it's like a subsidiary of, of 
one of the many pads of water from the ocean. So yeah. It may have some I salt say if it comes it. from the ocean, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very refreshing. And then here we have the mountains, mm -hmm. which, you know, is that totally the different about? terrain. Um, so inside of Norse paganism or, or inside your own personal practice, um, what drew you to the to that practice? What drew you um, not just to Norse paganism, but to witchcraft in general? Wow. Uh, Big loaded question. Loaded question. I have to, I've, I've taken a lot of inventory on that topic, and I have to say that I was a witch when I was like five years old. I mean, there were things that I did then intuitively that when I look back, it's like, that was witchcraft. <laughs> you know, Give or, us an example. Well, I mean, if there was something I wanted, I wrote it down on a piece of paper. You know, I, I've always done that. I mean, and later in life, I had a, a piece of paper with a lot of things I wanted relating to my family, which I just recently discovered again in a jewelry box, and all of it had come true. I'm like, I have been doing this my whole life. Nice. Um, nice. Also, I was very intuitive. Uh, I sensed, even as a little kid, I sensed spirits in my house or other houses. There was a lot of consignment shops where I grew up, and I really oh, felt yeah. uncomfortable in those. Um, I, I really had this feeling that someone was watching over my shoulder that wasn't visible while I was looking at clothing. It's like a very uncomfortable yeah, feeling. Oh, just, yeah. You know, and even as an adult, and I finally verbalized it like, you know what? I'm not going in there. <laughs> I'm not going to go buy things. That's not every single consignment shop, but there's some that I walk in and I get this vibe. And I do, people are attached to their things oh, when absolutely. they pass on. Absolutely. And so I've gotten away from secondhand things. I, unless well, I know who it is. I make sure from. to cleanse them on the porch before I even bring them in here. They get cleansed because, uh, yeah, you never know who touched it last. You never know who owned it last. And, yeah, yeah who... And yeah. also, um, I was very much into nature when I was a real little kid. Um, well, a lot of us at that generation were because there was no technology. But right. still, I, I lived in a circumstance where... My room was completely surrounded by all windows except for one wall. And every morning the sun just came in and was almost blinding. And but it was beautiful. There was the, the room itself, not so much, but the nature that I was able to see that came in that room and reflect off like I would see like the the dust through the sun and I was fascinated with that floating That's kind of like scrying so you were like scrying and, and also awesome. there were doors that had cut glass that went into the other part of the house that would reflect off the sun and I would get rainbows in there and even though the room itself was awful and it wasn't even heated that's a whole nother story but uh <laughs> yeah I was just mesmerized by that and I couldn't get enough of it and outside I had my own sanctuary inside a forsythia bush and I just was I really that. attracted to nature um, I I always found a way to make my own sanctuary and feel protected your own sacred space my own sacred space I love that. Um, I use music for it. I mean, and, you know, whatever little child decorations I could have. <laughs> I love I, that. I was doing that and not even realizing what it actually was. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you use a lot of the same, like, spell casting techniques? Or how has it kind of evolved to what you do now as a practice? Some of it 
is still similar and some of it is not. I mean, of course, back then I didn't have an altar. Right. I mean, I had things collected, but I didn't, and I was a big rock collector of crystals. Every time I go to the Poconos, I grab, I was addicted to crystals. <laughs> um, but the one thing I noticed that I think is the same is when I, and, and currently when I meditate, mm -hmm. I contact my deities as a collective. Um, and I visualize them and it's, there's not a lot of words in my head. I, I mean, I, there, there's like a mutual understanding between them and me. Gotcha. An um, unspoken agreement. An unspoken agreement. Yes. I love that. I love that. Um, so like, well, what have you learned in the past that's kind of stuck with you? Like, what do you still practice um, that maybe you didn't realize, you know, that you were actually uh, practicing? Um, well, maybe like something you learned early on? I... Like I said, I created my sanctuary, mm -hmm. and my room was very, very cold a good bit of the time. And I, as I have looked back after doing a deep dive into Norse paganism, mm -hmm. I've gotten to know a goddess which is not maybe that really well known to most people who mm -hmm. have heard of Norse mythology or practice it as Isa. And she is a goddess of, of ice. And she, she protected me. I, I sense she had been there protecting me. I just got goosebumps. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I didn't know that that was her per se, but I had a sense that I was being protected. And that, I love that. And that someday, if I waited long enough, my situation would change. But if you know anything about Issa, she moves at a glacier pace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I had to be very patient for my circumstances to change, but I'm happy the way it turned out. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, it fascinates me that um, we can get to know these deities on a personal level. And it's, it's, you know, just the same as the Christians do with Jesus, uh, Catholics do with saints. Um, it's working with that energy instead of like handing it over, deity take the wheel. It's more like, no, help me steer a little more. Yeah. 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 I find that a part of my practice now, and even then as a child I was grateful for certain things and now that's part of my I, every day I practice gratefulness uh, and yes. I thank my deities for what I have and I don't really make a practice of asking them can you give me right it's we are going to do this together uh, this is going to happen and we are going to do this together. Um, for example, I have back issues. I don't ask for the pain to go away. I just say, who, you, we are going to distract me from it. <laughs> so I'm not thinking about it. So yes. um, I, I make that a daily practice. It's not always verbal though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be, um, you know, thoughts are powerful into yes. themselves and, uh, everything comes from the divine mind anyway. So it's all, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. times when I do use words, but yeah. like a lot of times when I go on I, what I call a meditation walk, 
and they're, they're usually about a half an hour. And I use, I usually use some kind of music. Uh, hang drum music is recently one of my favorites. But I, if I'm in a Norse mode, I might use Danheim or Wardruna recordings to oh, okay. get in touch with my ancestors. Um, but during that time, I mean, it's most of it's all in my head. I don't say much. I think a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I talk to my deity. Sure. But I don't talk out loud. You don't need to vocalize. No. Gotcha. I love that. I love that. Um, so can you kind of describe what being a witch means to you? Wow. <laughs> um, I don't ask easy questions. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, it's it, there's so much to it. I mean, being a witch to me is opening the door to everything. Everything that the universe is and beyond, whatever is beyond the universe. Uh, being part of the one, part of the collective. We are all, we are all part of the same thing. This huge entity, yes. the universe, mm -hmm. we, we are we are part of it and it is part of us. Its energy is our energy and our energy is its energy. And even science has started to wake up to that fact like with every action, there's a reaction. Absolutely, uh, yes. So, you know, you have to be careful what actions you take, right. whether you're a witch or not a witch. But if you are a witch, you know, what you do have an effect. Absolutely. So you have to be careful what actions you do take, especially in spell work. So. Yes, yes. And um, talking about spell work, do you do you have a like a favorite spell, like a go-to? Um, not sure. I have one specific spell per se, but I have two methods if I if there's something that needs to be taken care of my favorite is tarot spells and also just plain visualization and Ooh, that's yes. what I started out with even though I didn't know it as a child I visualized things and you know eventually they would happen I didn't realize that that was what it was but I've been doing that all my life and didn't realize it. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Um, do you want to talk about like favorite books that sure. kind of, um, we can talk about um, like what books helped you get back into it or what you learned to begin with that kind of got your foot in the door as far as um, practicing. Okay. Uh, not just witchcraft, but maybe some Norse the paganism Nor okay. too. I have there, a so. couple of books I can show you. We'll start with the witchcraft um, okay. ones. For, well, this one here, which is sitting on top. I'm a fan of Melissa Sonova, if she's ever listening. <laughs> she has Kitchen Table Tarot. I just love this book so much. I bought two copies of it, one for Maryland and one for here. <laughs> uh, it, it takes all the intimidation out of tarot, mm -hmm. and she has her own little spin on things. Plus, she has a great sense of humor. She's hilarious. She is hilarious, and it just really breaks all that intimidation down. So I have many times this book is really worn out, but, <laughs> but I love it. And awesome. even though I have all these decks, I still occasionally refer to something when something's like, oh, I'm not sure I got this one. Yeah. I, yeah. I go to her. Nice. And she also has a book called Kitchen Table Magic with Melissa Sonova. Yes. And that takes all the intimidation out of witchcraft. Uh, and, nice. and a sense of humor. She has a sense of humor with it. I just love her spin on things. Yeah, me so, too. If you're starting out or you've been doing it a while, this this is a worthwhile book to have. Yeah, it was a good refresher course yes. for me, definitely. I'm like, oh yeah, I, rem I remember that I know this already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, back there, it 
with cobwebs on it. Yeah. We got it out and we dusted it off and this is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Love and that. then this book, which you had introduced me to, yes. Uh, and when I read it, I thought, oh, I've been doing this. I didn't know. I yes. Did this. <laughs> Creative visualization by Richard Webster. Uh, it. This has to be, I guess the the root of spell work is visualization. It just hundred uh, percent. I mean, you can use all the accessories you want, but. It's here. The yes. visualization is here. Yes. And uh, so that's why I recommend this book to everyone that is has been doing the craft or is interested in starting out. It, it's a fantastic book to have. Thank you, Joey, for You're welcome. recommending that book to me. You're welcome. <laughs> and then there's a couple others here that I got. Um, Psychic Witch by Matt Oren. And that's a very helpful book as well and uh i would recommend maybe starting that after you read the creative visualization book yeah you know, the, because you use a lot of creative visualization yes. in that book yes, yes definitely and then here's a couple this is practical protection magic which every witch should have yes. to learn how to protect themselves in all different situations and ellen dugan is the author mm -hmm. of this one there is another one which i didn't bring with me for some reason by Protection Magic by Amy Blackthorne. Amy Blackthorne has yes, one else. Yes, she also has Really one. good, yeah, also. And then my other favorite, which Joey also recommended yep. to me, you you are the I the started witch the librarian. librarian. <laughs> the witch librarian, I love that. Librarian. Yes. yes. The Veiled Cottage Witch, AKA and the witch librarian. librarian. <laughs> AKA <laughs> professional nerd. <laughs> Yeah, this is called uh, Full Contact Magic by Care Cool. I can never say his last Kula name. Kulahan. 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 And he is a witch and a police officer. And so very interesting stories he yes. has to tell in there. Yes. About his that. job and how he incorporates witchcraft as a police officer. That, uh, yeah, that's that pretty cool. That yeah. was pretty cool. No. Anyway. Um, did you want to go into Norse paganism we books as well? Um, Might as well while we're here okay. talking about books. Yeah, bring I, them out. <laughs> I started my journey into Norse paganism with one thing: this deck called the I can't even pronounce it. Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. De yeah. Deck. Uh, this was made by a, a father and daughter in Iceland, which. Uh, if you want to get any information about Norse paganism or runes or mythology or any kind of history regarding Norse paganism, Iceland is where you'll have to get it from because most things were destroyed in Scandinavia by the Christian missionaries and different soldiers that had gone through the Roman Empire. This is why we can't have nice things. Yes. So <laughs> when... <laughs> So uh, in Iceland, some of it was protected. So yeah. uh, they had the best records. But anyway, this uh, father and daughter, Hawker Haldorson and his G. Hawk's daughter, which that's how they say their last name. The, the men and their name with son and the women and their last name with daughter. Oh, okay. After the father. Okay. But I started with this book, or this uh, tarot deck, thinking, oh, I'm going to learn all about this really quickly. Well, I learned, I first, when I opened the box, there are 88 gods and goddesses that you have to learn about. There's some of the pictures here. It's black and white. Now, I have not used this with the spread that they intended. I had, I use it mostly for Oracle or uh, like just a question of which one of you gods and goddesses are working with me today. I love that, that's yes. perfect. Yeah. And that's been very helpful. And uh, this book 
which is a wonderful book, but it has a few things I had to correct in it. So I could <laughs> Oh, I had to, I mean, because one thing I've learned about Scandinavian people is they, they are very loosey-goosey with certain details. Yeah. <laughs> I love them, it's part of my heritage, but um, don't ever get a cookbook from them if you want. <laughs> anyway, um, I had to write some page numbers down. But anyway, this tells all about the gods and goddesses and uh, all the nine realms that exist in Norse mythology. So, so that's a good one to learn. Yeah, it's right? a great uh, way to start out learning about the gods and goddesses. Uh, for just Norse. For just, just Norse. Just Norse. Just Norse. Okay. And from there, I um, wanted to learn about the runes because now the runes aren't covered in the Yggdrasil deck, but they are referred to. Now I got I have a couple of oracle decks and several sets of runes, but this book, uh, this oracle deck, Odin and the Nine Realms. Uh, this this is their guidebook from their oracle deck, and this is by Sonia Grace. Okay. Um, it has runes in here, and it also has gods and goddesses as well, but not as many as in the Yggdrasil. It, it has the major ones in here. So this is a great way to learn about the runes and the Norse gods and goddesses as well. Yes. Um, and I have runes that I'll show you. Um, these are bone runes. I have a set of wooden ones, but I, I prefer the I bone. love the bone ones The too. bone ones are, uh, I just am very attracted to these. These work real well with me. I use them for spell work too. Yes. Um, here's another one. And then I have a travel set, which I love. And these are like little dice, but they have runes on each side. And they're real compact, and I ha take them with me in a travel case. I love that. You see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are awesome. Labradorite. Those are Labradorite, yes. right? Yep. Awesome. Um, and I yeah, have a couple more, <laughs> just three more books. There's this book here um, is The Way of Fire and Ice by Ryan Smith. It talks a lot about Norse paganism revival in America, Good. which is interesting. And it goes into some of the Norse mythology in the rooms as well. And uh, some of the bind rooms, I believe. Okay. So this cool. is a, a good one to have. And then we have Freya Aswin, who writes Northern Mysteries and Magic. This is an excellent book. It goes into some of the history of how the Scandinavians, which are Germanic tribes, uh, formed the runes. Um, it shows into a little history, mythology, and then the runes themselves. There's a lot there to learn because the mythology, you have to learn a, lot, learn a lot about the mythology to understand some of these things. Yeah, And then definitely. my last book here is a book by Edred Thorson. He has several books out, and he is like a, I believe what they call a guild master. Ooh. I am not worthy. <laughs> I am not worthy. Uh, it takes a lot to get to that level. I'm nowhere close. But his fate, he's fascinating. I, I really enjoy his books. Uh, he's very thorough on the history and the Germanic tribes, or he refers to them as the Teutonic tribes, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, bind runes and just uh, rune poems and all kinds Love of that. Uh, things regarding runes. Uh, there is another book I didn't bring, but I do recommend. Uh, it's called, well, two, actually. One is called the Poetic Edda, and then yes. the Prose Edda, which are sagas. Now, I have them uh, printed in English, and then on the opposite page is Norse. Um, one of these days, I have a challenge, and I'm going to learn how to, to read that part. Of Norse, <laughs> but that's down the road. <laughs> that's but anyway, cool. that's what cool. I have yes. to show you for today. Awesome. So, uh, would you want to talk about maybe a big mistake that you kind of learned oh, from? I've had a few. 
<laughs> a little snafu. <laughs> snafu. One of them, and I think, I mean, and I tell as many people as I can about this because I learned the hard way is do not ever do a spell. If you don't, either get someone's permission, unless they're on death's bed and they can't give you permission, but you think that they would want you to do this. Because if they don't give you permission or don't believe in what you're doing, the spell is not going to work. It's almost like a wall. They just yeah, kind they of resist a wall it. Up. Mm -hmm. And I had this one particular spell that I was working on and I did it without the person's permission. And with the best of intentions. With the best of intentions. It was for their benefit. Yeah. <laughs> and things started falling all over the place. And I actually had the courage to light a real candle with that, which you know I'm not a fire witch. <laughs> <laughs> the candle fell. I had to put that fire out. Uh, things just weren't coming together. And um, the spell didn't work either. Right. So I tell people, do not do, uh, do not do these spells if if you don't have permission. So going forward, I always make sure that I ask permission, or you know, I'll say, would you mind if I did something to help you out? Mm -hmm. And uh, if they believe if they don't believe in what you're doing, there's no point in doing it either. If they say, "Oh yeah," but they don't believe it, there's no sure, point sure, doing whatever. It. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> don't bother. It's not worth your time because uh, they have to believe it. Their energy has to be a part of what you're working with. It really does. And it, it really it's, it's combining your energy with that person's right, exactly. energy and connecting. And if there's no connection, you know, it's, you it's, just kind of get things going haywire. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's like the universe conspiring against your spell. <laughs> Literally. Yep. Um, okay, so on the other side of that, do you have a go-to spell that you, well, like, you always like, I will keep doing this forever kind of spell? Um... Lately, it's been a, a tarot spell with the strength card. Yes. Yeah, because I've needed that a lot. <laughs> well, the strength card is just a good booster yes, for it anything. Is. I mean, and you know, a spell doesn't have to be that elaborate. It could be your little wooden display, you know, the yeah. uh, tarot display, and put the strength card there, maybe a crystal or two, yeah. a candle, or even just a card. Yeah. And just yeah. looking at that every day. and. You know, or multiple times a day and meditating on it, it uh, it really helps. And and you tell a story with your tarot spell work. Yes. So can you talk about that? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to be very wordy with my tarot spells. <laughs> uh, I'm wordy with everything. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I pick a significator card that represents the person. Sometimes I use their their. Uh, birth their life path right. other times i'll use a card that intuitively i think is meant for this particular spell and then what i do is i take cards from the tarot deck that represent the story that i'm trying to make um for example if someone is on a journey that i'm worried they need to get there safely I have the chariot card, and then I might have the the six of wands arriving victoriously. Yeah, or, um, yeah. things like that. Um, and I mean, there's times where there's multiple things going on. Like maybe there's a journey, but the person's emotionally upset, and so I try to incorporate like the the Ace of Cups or something okay. like that in there so that they they are um, better, you know, that they're better renewed emotionally during this travel. I love that. Uh, things like that. Um, and I go a lot by just the intuition. Like when I'm holding the cards, I just get this feeling I need this card to be in there. And that's something it's really hard to tell another person because it's mm -hmm. it, it's intuition I have. But I, I mean, do you write this stuff down when you do it? 
not always. I've been getting better about that. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I admit, I am one of the witches that cannot do very well with the Book of Shadows. My handwriting is so terrible that I end up ripping pages out. So I, I can't read or write. This, Decide. Yes. I, I, I admit it. I own it. So I have started writing three by five cards, and I'm like a roll it, like a roll it. Yeah, and well, that worked. Whatever works. That's yeah. what I'm ended up doing, um, and that works better for me. So yes, awesome. I've been writing them on three by five cards. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Whatever works. Um. What advice would you give somebody who just wants to get into, I'll just say Norse paganism. I mean, to obviously, you know, read the books that you recommend, but other than that, you know, what kind of advice would you give somebody just starting out okay. on well, this path? Well, this kind of goes with whatever, whatever avenue of witchcraft you're undertaking mm -hmm. is take your time. It, this is a practice that is a lifelong practice and you are not going to know it all even 30 years from now you're not going to know it all there's just so much to learn and be patient with yourself um, grab go to those things that you feel connected to start with those uh, but read 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 as much as you can read and if you can find a group of people who are like-minded like you are that helps a lot because not everybody even when they're practicing the same thing has the same way they go about it and you might find oh i like that better or oh i don't like that or you know you just it, it gives you a more well-rounded approach plus it gives you a community to be a part Absolutely. of and i really enjoy being part of the community that we are now in yeah. and we all do different avenues of witchcraft yeah um i don't think any of us are exactly the same nope. and i love that and i would not want us all to practice the same because then we then we can't learn anything no. new and so i think that's so important um diversity is so is so very important um i think we already covered that um what about your favorite tarot card and least favorite okay um my favorite tarot card currently is the strength card yeah um and also it's very motivational for me um i you know so that that's a card that i uh, that i often put out like like i said it spells and you know i that that card is very motivational for me awesome now my least favorite card it used to be the tower mm -hmm. but i've made my peace with the tower I'm so glad because I love the tower and if I see a tower coming up and I'm reading for you, I get excited. Um, but yeah, yeah. You're, so now your current least favorite. The Ten of Swords. Yeah. Yeah, it, that one. It makes my back hurt to look at. Yeah, it. it's, it's painful to look at it. <laughs> it really, is. Yes. It, it, yes. It's, you can't help but grimace when, you, when it comes up, yeah. you're like, ooh. Ooh, I mean, I get, no, it's not a big deal because it's still a minor arcana card, but it's still, you no, feel the it impact. It still hurts. Yeah, it still hurts. Pain is pain. Pain is pain. Um, awesome. I, I like that. Um, so, how, what are your favorite ways to work with the runes in your in your spell work? Can you talk about how you use those the runes in your spell work? Uh, I use runes along with my tarot spells because even though there are comparisons to the meanings of runes to different tarot cards, they do have a very different um, feel to them. Uh, which is that is different than a tarot card. Uh, I often use Auras, which is the strength rune, you know, yes. with my strength card. <laughs> Even more of a um, boost. Yes. yes. So I, I use runes to boost the spell. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, and it all depends, it entirely depends on, on what the spell is that I'm working for, you know, working on which runes I use. But I do use them, uh, sometimes I use them by themselves. And of course, you know, we have bind runes that mm -hmm. we can use and, and they're commonly used as talismans. And I yes. have uh, ingas as a talisman. I should have worn that today. But oh, no worries. That, that actually, <laughs> Next uh, time. actually, I wear that because my maiden name, which is Iverson, has a connection to the ingas rune. That's very Which cool. Was that very is very cool. cool. I found that out. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So, kind of, were you, um, did I interrupt you? I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, did you want to talk about how that kind of bled over into your past life regression oh, studies? Yes. Um, yes. Well, to date, I have discovered I had five past lives. Five. Five. Three of them I discovered when I did a, a guided past life regression session. And uh, one of those lives was in Scandinavia. And my father was in it. I had, I had several family members that were in my current life that were in it, but not all. But, but the thing was, they were playing different parts. They weren't who they are to me gotcha. in present, yeah. my present life. Um, but that was interesting. Um, I also had a past life where I was living in the Black Forest, um, which which was interesting. So I've had I had several different ones. You have um, experience. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I um, yeah, so I know that I had that connection, but also, uh, most recently, um, I've been, ha well, ever since I was a child, I had this recurring dream of a red barn and a barn next to it that was not really a barn per se, but a, a red utility shed per se. It was smaller. But every time I had that dream or have it, because it, it's been going on since I was a kid, there was somebody, I knew there was somebody buried in the grass in between the two buildings. And even <laughs> to see something resembling this in real life, it gives me this like shudder. Yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> until I started doing research on my ancestors that I located an ancestor, a German one. But by the way, Germans all practiced runes, whether they were Scandinavian or they lived in Germany, they practiced runes. I just want to make that clear. A lot of people don't realize that because there are Germanic tribes that do the, that yeah. have done this. Yeah. Uh, but this particular German ancestor had been in the Revolutionary War and where he grew up, I found photographs that they took of these barns. There were, you know, and, and there was a bad battle right near that area. So I uh, oh, wow. had that. Now the last thing that I, I, um, had a very painful, vivid memory of was most recently this summer in Gettysburg. Um, I have been visiting Get Gettysburg, I guess probably for the past 15 years or so. It might be a little bit longer than that. Every year I would go because we, my husband and I volunteer for um, repairing the cemetery and keeping the grounds up one, every twice a year. So, but every time I go to the section of the battlefield called the wheat field, I would get this extremely emotional sensation that would come over me, and I would burst into tears for no reason. I mean, I'm like, I'm not upset. Why am I crying? Why am I the crying? The energy level is so high. I and can't even imagine. There yeah. we go again. And even <laughs> though I, I, I went there year after year after year trying to figure out what in the world 
was causing this reaction. I didn't feel any of that when we were working in the cemetery, nothing, just in the wheat field. And this past year, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So I sat myself in a folding chair out in the middle of the wheat field in the morning when nobody was there. And I started asking questions. And I had brought a pendulum with me and I brought my tarot cards. And I then I just let myself meditate. And I remembered laying down on the grass, being wounded, watching pigs eat other people oh. around me. Oh. And I was terrified. Oh wow. And I was like, okay, I've had enough of this. <laughs> had enough of over. I'm done. We're done. <laughs> we're done. I'm out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, anyway, we're, we're finished. <laughs> uh, I. It took me all that time to get the courage to do that. So obviously, I had a life there, and I died. I. I, I was believe I was very young, like maybe like 19. Um. And it's also taking me much of my life to get over the fear of a lot of things that I sense and I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm finally to the point where it's like, well, I'm a little, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to do it. And uh, it's yeah. opened up so many worlds to me. It's just amazing. I, I love that. I love that. Um, can you talk about your studies in metaphysics? Sure. Um, I have completed the bachelor's section uh, through uh, University of Sedona, which has under its umbrella the University of Metaphysics. So I am a ordained minister through the University of Metaphysics, and I'm currently now working on my master's for um, the benefits of self-hypnosis and then after that gets done which is we've got a lot of reading yet to do uh, I am going to be doing a doctoral thesis on uh, the benefits of healing through past life regression and I thought that that will be an adventure oh definitely. given what I have experienced already and um, that has going taking these courses has really helped my craft uh, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things and I mean I just can't can't put into words how beneficial it's been to my overall life yeah and we were talking about not too long ago because I'm also in the master's program working on my thesis um, I'm doing mine on healing with color and light but we were talking about how it's made our readings clear. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, learning and improving the self, you radiate and you vibrate higher, I think. Yeah, what, and what are your thoughts yes, on that? Yes, I mean, and like, I usually try to do a meditation before I would start that process and get that energy from the divine you know, take back my energy, you know, yes. and it does help. I mean, it, it like, I am not doing the reading alone. I am not yeah, doing yeah. it alone at all. Yes. You know, past you, you know, divine you, um, you know, future you, it's, no. it's all. <laughs> we're, all we're divine. It's divine. You know, yes. we're, we're, we are divine we're really tapping into a higher version of the self. Yes. Um, you know, and that's kind of what they teach in metaphysics. Um, you know what? I love studying by metaphysics. I know we're going way over time, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Um, I, I've, I really enjoyed looking at scripture from the Bible in a metaphysical context. Oh, yes. Yes. It has, like, oh my gosh, that's what he was talking about, or that's what, uh, you know, whoever wrote that scripture, what the the real metaphysical meaning um, is. It gives you a that. whole different perspective on Jesus, as yes. Jesus the, um, the meditator, Jesus the, um, oh, what's, what's the word? 
I'm looking for the word. Anyway, he well, he was a healer. He, was a he healer, practiced transformational but magic. What what his words were then are not what we're getting today. No, and no. So, but it gives us the root of what he was the message that he was trying to get out. Right, there. right. It's like look under the surface just a little bit and open it up and unpack certain scripture and you're going to see it has a much wider yeah. He was definition. a master metaphysics. Yes. Master in metaphysics. Yes. yes. Um, okay. So I think this is probably going to be our last question. Um, what are your favorite tools that you oh, wow. use for spellcraft and especially for your 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 craft, okay. your practice. Separate from what I said before, the visualization is... Visualization is number one. Number one. But yes. other than that, I use a lot of different things. I have three wands now. <laughs> um, one of them is your apple wand. And um, I have an ebony wand. And then I have, I think one is made out of hickory. Oh, Cool. Uh, that one is in Maryland. I left that one behind, so I have to have something back there to work. With. <laughs> yeah. But I I use those now with my tarot spells, uh, and if I'm just visualizing something in my mind mm -hmm. and I want to send the energy long distance, I use the the wand to help me with that. Oh, I love that. Um, I use singing bowls. I use a hang drum to begin and end a spell. I love that. Uh, I, love I that. use lots of different crystals. And I guess for the most part, I tend to intuitively use crystals. Like, I just feel like I need this one here. I need this one here. I don't look You don't up look up what no. correspondences I or anything. Just, it's full intuitive. I, I love that. intuitively. And sometimes I use herbs, but if I'm short on herbs, which I don't think I will be for a while because <laughs> I have a lot from your garden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if I am, I have the um, herb cracker deck, which I use yes. the cards that have the pictures of the herbs in place. Um, that is such a good cheater code. Yes. You know, that is such yeah. a good cheater code because some things don't grow around here like slippery elm is a really good anti-gossip herb but it doesn't grow around so here you have to so you know yeah. if if you really want to just use the energy of that using that yeah. uh, that or any oracle card that has herbs on it any tarot card that is herbal based you can always use in place of that and just put it on your altar Bing. There it is. And of course, I do use candles, but uh, I I often use the battery-operated candles if I'm afraid of knocking something over and setting it on fire because I have done that many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> and a light is a light, right? <laughs> a light's a light. Yes. But uh, I also use regular candles um, and some that my daughter has made, I've started to oh, use a lot. They're amazing. Yes. I will actually put that in the uh, description box as well. Okay. Put a link to um, her store um, in case you want to, you know, purchase your own from her daughter, um, Zoe. Yes. So, um, Pagan Poetry is what Pagan the poetry. brand name is. Yes. We will put that in the description box. Anything else that you want to kind of say, um, get out, uh, that you, any messages for everyone out there? <laughs> I, I think in closing, I, I just want to say that, uh, don't let all of the different things that people do for their practice intimidate you if you're just starting out. Um, a lot of this is just up here and go with your gut and go with what feels right and i think that is, you can't go wrong with using your intuition awesome i love that 
I love that. So make sure you like this video if you liked this video. Subscribe to The Veiled Cottage Witch and hit up those links in the description. And please share with everyone, we're all learning. So this could help someone else pass it on. And I think that's it. Um, bye for now. Bye. And have a wonderful day and blessed be.